I built this image generation app using Cursor, and I'm going to give you five tips that you need to know if you want to build apps with Cursor as well. So before I jump in, let me quickly show you what this does. It uses the Gemini 2.0 flash experimental model which is a new ai model that google has come out with that allows you to edit images really well and it also runs really quickly so just as an example here's an image of a living room i could say please show please replace the couch with a more modern mid-century design and uh, it's going to take about five six seconds most likely to uh, update the image and here we go so as you can see everything here uh, in the photo looks the exact same it just replaced that couch so that's something i can see it kept to the bottom red but uh, overall it did a, a really good job and what this model does is it it does a good job at keeping the context uh, the same uh, so i also added this feature to regenerate so we can see if that generates a slightly different um version or maybe removes that bottom so here we go so this generated a different version uh, i have that regenerate button i can go uh, back and forth so we can see the background is all pretty much the same and you can generate all sorts of things with this model so here an armchair made of paper studio photo origami style it generated this um, you can also generate posters uh, you can add text to things as well you can generate logos all sorts of things and this is an app that has login and log out i used Superbase. and in this video i'm going to give you specific tips that i learned building this that i think are going to be helpful for your own cursor projects so tip number one you don't have to start every project with cursor from scratch and you don't even have to start with a tool like bolt or lovable you can go to GitHub and there's all sorts of public open source GitHub repositories that you can go to. So I found this one from Google Gemini, from the Google Gemini team, an example chat app. And what I did was I started my project from this repository. And what this did was give me kind of a starting point. And all you have to do is just follow the instructions. Every GitHub repository or most of them are going to have installation instructions of how to actually clone this and use it in cursor. And once you have this example, you can immediately start building in cursor and, and start building off of it. So I've added a lot to this app, but just the basic functionality of generating an image with your API key from Google, from Gemini. I started with that fork from GitHub. So that's tip number one. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to start with an open source clone of a, an existing GitHub repository. Okay, so tip number two. Cursor recently released a new model here. So if you're in, in Cursor, we're going to select Agent. We're going to select the uh, model Claude 3.7 Sonnet Max. Now, this is $0.05 cents per request and per tool use. So each message actually... Um, for what I've seen, I believe it's using many requests. So it, I think for me, it was costing around 30 cents every like a message I sent asking it to do a task. Uh, but your mileage will vary on that. But I found that if I'm stuck on a bug and I switch to max, like 70% of the time, it's been able to solve that bug for me. So the reason max uh, it helps is that it's bringing in a lot more context of your code base into the prompt. So uh, the AI just has more context when it is um, giving you a response. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, be sure to use Max when you think it's going to be helpful. Tip number three, also along the models here, is when I'm asking Cursor to help with design, I like to use Claude 3.7 with thinking turned on. I find that helps with the design uh, part of things. Now, one thing that I like to include in my prompt when I'm asking for design updates is to specifically say, like, I'll put in the design request. So I'll type out, you know, the full design request, and then I'll say something along the lines of do not make any functional changes, only change the specified design request. So what this does is prevent 3.7 thinking from kind of going off the rails and adding a bunch of features, removing features, things like that. Like it's only going to focus on that design. So that's a tip number three and, and what I recommend doing here when you're working with the different models. 
Um, just a bonus quick tip, like otherwise, I think it's good to use 3.7 or 3.5. I go back and forth. I, I'm not fully sure which one I like more right now, um, but just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, tip number four is if you are getting stuck with something, it is always, always helpful to take a screenshot of whatever uh, the issue is. And then you want to go ahead and paste that and you can see the image is there, it's just really small. Um, you want to paste that into your message. So let's say, you know, the bug, the issue, it's not working is like, I want to, um, you know, add more spacing between this and that or, or whatever it is. Adding the image is always going to get you a better result. Or sometimes if there's like an error, you can send both states of what's happening. And doing that is just going to give you a better result and just give the AI more information to work from. Okay. And tip number five, if you're using cursor and you want to add authentication, meaning login and log out and a database, I recommend using Supabase. Now, the tip that I'll share as well is what you can do is you can just literally ask Cursor to help you set up Supabase. It's going to set it up for you. It's going to um, add the ENV file. This is where you actually add like your API key and stuff for Supabase. Now, a tip I want to share is when you are setting up your uh, database, if you have any trouble connecting the actual app to Supabase, so there is a way for the cursor to just directly have it like connect to your Supabase project and directly set up your database. What you can do instead is if you have, go to the migrations tab, it's going to generate these migrations, which are essentially SQL queries of what you, what it wants to do to kind of create all the tables. And you just copy everything from those migrations, go to Supabase, then you would just go to your project, you would go to SQL editor, just paste it in, um, you would just paste in all that SQL, hit run. And then if there's any errors, you just let cursor know, otherwise it should just work. And that's going to create your tables. And then you would go back to cursor and say, I just created my tables, you know, let, what do I want to do next? So that I find really helpful. And, and uh, there's like just a little bit of getting started with adding, you know, connecting your super base project, making sure you have your API keys and things like that. But otherwise, I definitely recommend Supabase when you want to add a backend. Now you can use other tools like Firebase or all sorts of other backends, but for me, I like using Supabase. Okay, and just a quick bonus tip here is don't forget about the ask mode. And then there's also the edit mode as well. But I like to use ask mode. And this is good just if you want to ask a question. And uh, let's say it's something like, how do I, you know, a question about GitHub, like how do I go into GitHub and revert back to a previous GitHub a push that I did and, and it just can anything about coding, especially if you're not, uh, don't come from like an extremely technical background. This is really helpful because any question you have about coding, about your code base, if you're asking about your code base, you want to use agent, but you could say like only answer the question, do not code. Um, and then you could, you know, ask your question and then, and then send cause agent, otherwise it might start making changes. But if you just ask questions, it'll, it'll search your code base and it'll explain to you how your app is set up. So it's really as simple as that. It's really helpful to do that and, and just ask questions here with the agent um, or ask questions about just general coding, how to set up GitHub, things like that. Um, okay, real quick, I'm going to give one more tip just because I'm thinking of it now. If you want to commit to GitHub, like something that's helpful that you can do is say like, I want to make a new commit to uh, GitHub. And you don't even have to do it from the terminal. It'll just like help you do it here directly. So it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Uh, you can run the terminal commands right from here. So you don't have to actually like even remember the specific commands to do, but you can also always open up terminal right here on the top and have access to your terminal. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions at all, let me know. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our No Code MBA YouTube channel right here to get more free content like this. Um, in the future, I'll probably make a video more about what I built here and how it works. And be sure to subscribe to get access to that once I release the video. Leave a comment if you have any questions or if there's anything you want us to cover in the future, leave a comment below and uh, we read all of the comments. So we really appreciate it. And uh, like the video as well. If you like the video, um, I make these for free. So it always helps the YouTube algorithm if you uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And finally, click the link in the description if you want to get matched with an AI developer that can uh, help build your ideas 
way more quickly and way more inexpensively than a traditional uh, developer. Click the link in the description. We'll match you with a great AI developer who can help uh, build your idea uh, really fast and uh, really affordably. Um, so thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.